Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a review of Graveyard Keeper, shall we? So what we're going to do is I'm going to review the game in a non-spoilery way, talk about the different criteria that I look at when I review games, and give it a grade. Then I'm going to talk about is this a game I think you should buy and play in the second portion of the review. So before I start reviewing Graveyard Keeper, it first is important to know what Graveyard Keeper is, what kind of a game it is. So on Steam, it is defined by users as a pixel graphics crafting RPG simulation that is 2D and... I will add some elements to that as well. It's basically take Stardew Valley, the way that Stardew Valley uses farming simulation, but also combines many different game systems like fighting, fishing, relationships, buying and selling, building, taking care of animals, exploring, mining, crafting, all of that. That is Graveyard Keeper, except Graveyard Keeper is a much darker vision on that because, well, you're keeping a graveyard and you need to tend a graveyard, you need to embalm corpses, and you have a lot more duties that are grisly compared to the cuteness of, say, Stardew Valley. However, the game does a great job mitigating the dark elements with a macabre sense of humor. You know, the, the game is very, very funny and, and light, and the pleasant pixel graphics make it so it's not, you know, just some kind of gore fest. There is gore, but it's presented in this cartoony way, so I didn't mind it myself. Now, the description on Steam says, Build and manage a medieval graveyard while facing ethical dilemmas and making questionable decisions. Welcome to Graveyard Keeper, the most inaccurate medieval cemetery sim of the year, and that should tell you about the sense of humor. You are in a medieval setting, and you are, as the story will tell you right at the beginning of the game, a character from modern day who was presumably killed and then sent through some kind of portal or something into the past and forced to keep a graveyard. While you're doing this, you're going to need to prepare corpses for the graveyard, that will be dropped off by a charming donkey in his wagon. And you're going to need to kind of decorate a graveyard, building really fancy graveyard decorations. You even get into doing things in this game like running a church and giving sermons, doing science experiments. You fish, you fight, although you don't really fight too much. You mine, you cook. You don't have relationships. You get married like you do in Stardew Valley because your character is already you know, in a relationship when you get in this, it's more like you have relationships in terms of how much people like you in the town. There is a town that you interact with and how much interaction you do, how much story you get and what story you get. This also depends on the DLC. The DLC also governs what systems there are. For example, one of the DLCs allows you to make zombies that you can then animate to automate labor they can you know chop wood for you and carry it back to your base and and do different tasks for you and that's tremendous i should tell you right at the beginning of this review that i am going to be talking about this with all of the dlc so we're going to be covering this game by doing so in a fashion that incorporates all i believe there's four dlc packages by now because at this point with Graveyard Keeper and its life cycle. It was released in 2018 initially by Lazy Bear Games through publisher Tiny Build. It comes, you can buy it on the Switch like with an Ultimate Edition where it's got all of the DLC and it goes on sale so frequently. I recommend most if not all of the DLC. It's uneven, some of it's better than others, but Long story short, I'm going to be talking about all of it as I compile my notes and generate a grade for Graveyard Keeper. So we now know it's a game where 
it's a simulation. It's got a little bit of management. If you have the zombies, you, you cook, you farm, and it's very much akin to Stardew Valley. I'm not going to spoil the story because the story is actually one of the really strong parts of the game for the most part. And it has some surprising twists and turns and plays out almost like a soap opera and is one of the elements that's different from Stardew Valley. The story in Stardew is there, but it's more bare bones compared to what you've got here in Graveyard Keeper. So now that we know what kind of a game Graveyard Keeper is, let's move into the review itself. And the first category that I always like to rate with my review is the fun factor. What does this game ask you to do? And is it fun to do the major things that you're going to be doing while you play this game? So this game wants you to craft, build, decorate, embalm, fight, fish, trade, travel, explore, mine, etc., etc. It's it's a crazy amount of different things going on in the game, but overall, it's fun to do these things. The combat works just fine. It's a little bit janky, but it's Stardew's combat in that sense. It's not really the strong portion of the game. It's there. You'll figure it out. It's kind of like Zelda light style combat, but the elements that shine in terms of the fun are decorating the graves and embalming the corpses and making a really, really nice graveyard is surprisingly fun. You also get to decorate your house. You get to expand your property. You get to create farmland, grow trees, make little outposts as your community, well, not your community, just your operation, your graveyard kind of grows. And that's really, really cool. Now, it is unfortunate, perhaps, that you don't have very much building space in Graveyard Keeper. You are allotted only a little bit amount of space to put your structures when you're building outside of your house and even inside of the basement to the church or wherever you're at. You don't have that much space. So what this means is there's not too much creativity that goes into laying out your operation. There is an ergonomic or efficient operation you could go for, but as far as, you know, really, really being stylish and getting into it and having this massive sprawling thing, you are confined and limited to these tight grids, but it doesn't impede the game. It's just something that's worth mentioning. I think that most of the systems in the game are intuitive and fun. The, the worst system for me is the fishing. I don't enjoy it, but you don't really even have to do that if you don't want to. There's some stuff in the game where it's just very minimal how much you have to do it at all. But the things that you're going to be doing the most, I enjoy. So overall, I think the game is very fun and it has a funny sense of humor and interacting with people is amusing. So that's a plus. The tech tree is done pretty well, but here's one of the downsides of the game, which is that even though it's fun, it's a little bit too grindy for me in places where you're going to need to be getting so many different types of resources together, and it takes a little bit longer than I would like to create some of the nicer gravestones and some of the better stuff. Even with superior tools and instruments, you're going to be working a long time just to burn bodies and, and make progress. So there's probably more grind than there needs to be, in my opinion. Another element that I don't care for in the way that the game is designed in terms of the fun is that there are days of the week that are attributed to certain NPCs, so they only appear on this day. And that's kind of cool to give people their own day, but it becomes really inconvenient when, like, oh, I need to see this person and it's going to be six days before they come back or whatever it is. And you're just kind of like, well, that's frustrating. I just have to wait. And yes, they give you a Zen garden where you can meditate to pass time. And there's plenty of tasks that you can do, but it's not really that fun if you miss your timing on something like that, in my opinion. That being said, I think that this is a pretty fun game and I don't have any things that are major frustrations beyond just a little bit of too much grind and I don't like the way that the day system works and I'm not a fan of the fishing. So next what I like to talk about are the controls. The controls in my opinion are 
just fine. Everything makes sense. Um, I played the game using a gamepad and it worked well. All button presses and the mapping w was pretty good. Uh, I had no issues. Sometimes there was a little jankiness with like getting the button press to trigger or the pathing of your character, but it's very minimal. So overall, I feel like the control for Graveyard Keeper was very strong. Now, a subset of the control that I like to talk about are the systems and the UI. So when you're controlling your keeper, just walking around and interacting, that does well. But how do all of the systems control? You've got to, you know, fight. You got to fish. You got to farm. You got to embalm. You got to navigate the menus. You got to, uh, you know, craft, open the tech tree, talk to people, buy and sell. All of the different interactions and systems within the game, how do those control? Honestly, I think they control well. Like, yes, this is derivative to a degree of games that have come before that are of this ilk, most notably Stardew Valley, but that's not a bad thing when you can just pick up and play the game because it makes sense how everything controls and how all of the systems work. They work in a way that you would expect them to work if you've played a game like this before. And if it's not a game that you've played before, like a genre that you've played before, I think that they're intuitive enough to where that's not really a problem at all with the game in terms of how all of the systems work. Now, some of them are better executed than others. And this gets into not necessarily just an issue of control, uh, but it is, it, it's hard to figure out where to place this concern that I have with the game, which is maybe fun, maybe control, maybe design, some of the systems, especially in the later DLCs, they're just not explained very well. And they don't um, all work together cohesively. So there is just kind of sometimes in the game where you don't really know where you're supposed to be going or doing necessarily. It's not as clear as it could be. I had to look things up like, you know, where do I get oil or wh where am I supposed to? What am I supposed to do? How do I even do this? occasionally and and that is an issue but it's such a popular game that all of those things can easily be looked up but it is a you know an issue with how the controls are implemented with the systems that sometimes it's not obvious how they work um, or you know why you would want them or when they're supposed to come into play and this is again a, a difficult kind of issue to tackle but when I was first playing Graveyard Keeper, the DLCs, there were only two of them that were out, and then two of them were added as I was playing. And so it made sense to have these later DLCs added that added kind of more endgame because I was already far along in the game. But since then, I had started up a complete beginner's guide of Graveyard Keeper, and some of those systems from the DLCs just appear like right away at the beginning of the game in a kind of distracting and disjointed fashion. So even though there's a lot of stuff going on, it's really hard to, you know, suss out. They color code the quests. Don't get me wrong. They do make an effort to kind of separate these things. But the finished state of the game is different than the way it was when I played it as only some of the DLCs were present. And it is a kind of a mixed bag presentation wise but none of it breaks the game none of it's like i can't do this and as far as the ui goes i think the ui is fine i had no problem with it it was very clear and easy to read you could move your items around um, the inventory management was okay you could stack stuff up you could build storage pretty quickly and uh you could i mean i wish you had an auto put into chests and and, and all of that jazz but uh, with some more quality of life with it, but it wasn't, you know, prohibitive. And the tech tree, sometimes it was a little bit weird, uh, but for the most part, I felt the UI was good. It was consistent. Um, everything made sense within it. Now the UI for some of the systems, like the last system they added, the soul business is not my favorite, but overall, I think the UI is good. Now, what about the story of the game? Another thing I like to discuss is, does this game have a good story? Some games, you don't need a story. Some games, the story is kind of tacked on. Sometimes it's really forgettable. But in this case, um, even though the story is kind of like 
melodramatic, over the top at times. It's funny. Like, it's a cool story, and it surprised me that there was going to be as much story as there was, and all of the depth of the characters and what's going on here in this strange place that you find yourself as the main character. I actually think the story is pretty cool in this game. It's not going to you know, stick with you for the rest of your life um, and change you or something like that emotionally, but it's a cool story that's funny that does propel the game along nicely, in my opinion. Now, another portion of a game that's always important to discuss are the graphics, the visuals. How does this game look? This is one of the best parts about Graveyard Keeper, in my opinion, are the visuals. I love charming, bright, pixelated graphics like this, evoking you know, post-Super Nintendo kind of Sega Saturn era of nice pixelation, very, very well animated. Looks fantastic, in my opinion. I think for what the game is trying to do, the graphics are amazing. It's not the most breathtaking spectacle of graphics, but I think it's a real strong point of Graveyard Keeper. Now, what about the audio of the game? How does the game sound? The sound effects are good. The voice acting is hilarious for the people. It's kind of like the parents in um, Charlie Brown talking, you know, like, wah, 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 wah. It's funny. But then the music of the game is actually really good. I get the theme song stuck in my head like all the time. Uh, it It is a very, very cool soundtrack, I think. And some of the DLC music does not fit very well. Uh, it's like, I don't know, I, I almost remember like a, a reggae or kind of like more modern sensibility that didn't fit thematically with the medieval stuff of the early game OST but for the most part I really like the music in the game and then what about style how does it all come together is this a game that has a nice sense of style and design and this is tricky because you have a game that is not the diff type in its genre. That's going to be Stardew Valley. So it's not like it's a groundbreaking game stylistically, but what this game does so well is it executes on the systems, makes it fun, has a great story, good visuals, enjoyable game, very fun, and it creates its own identity within the shadow of Stardew and that space. So even though it's not this iconic, you know, kind of standalone type of game stylistically because it's innovative, groundbreaking, it's really cool. It's very funny. They don't take themselves too seriously in the writing or the presentation. And so I think it has a great sense of style. So if you combine all of that together, how do I grade this game overall? Before I to reveal my grade for the game, I always like to talk about a baseline for the grading with how is it on Metacritic and how are the Steam reviews. The Metacritic reviews are difficult because um, what's available is a mixed bag of like when the game was released and they don't take into account all of the DLCs or they do those differently or they just review the PC or the Switch. So um, it's not like a, a really clear picture. Currently for PC, with 16 critics on Metacritic, uh, Graveyard Keeper has a 69, and the user score is a 7.2. Now on Steam, however, is very positive with 30,000 user reviews. And I think the Steam picture is more clear because it's updated more frequently, and it takes into account I think, anyway, most of the DLC because it's purchased at a bundle at this point. And the recent reviews are also very positive. It's not like it's fallen off or anything like that. So given that, let's talk about the grade for the game. Now, I have been doing reviews on this channel, and I've only done a few. And I'm really evolving and growing how I create game reviews, so any feedback you have about the review itself is very helpful just as I kind of codify my system and approach to presenting a review for a game. I've thought a lot about 
what my grade means. And it just was very simple. You know, I'm a professor, so whatever I grade something at, it's like how I evaluate it. And I give it a letter grade like I would in the classroom and we move on and that, you know, does well. But it doesn't really tell you what is an A, what is a B, what is a C. So I think I want to introduce some philosophical notes on what I consider to be an A game. Now, within each ranking, there's going to be plus just neutral and minus as kind of subgrades, but an A is an iconic, unique game that's the best in its genre, or it's genre-defining. It's a masterpiece, an enduring classic. It's nearly flawless in its execution, and this can be if you have a game that's not one of a kind, but it's so well done, it could be elevated to an A, for example. The game has great design, and it could be considered a work of art, potentially. So this is the highest rating. A B level game is a very good game that maybe it's derivative or it's not groundbreaking maybe it's not the best in the genre but it's still a good time it's a fun game it's got some flaws but it's still worth playing and it's one of those things where if you love that genre you might personally elevate it because you just have a dispensation for that type of game but overall i'm still comfortable saying this is a really good game you know it's not going to change the world but it's a really good one and that's a B. C games are average, and, you know, they're only something you would do just because you've got no other options. You get it for cheap. You have low expectations going in, you know, or you just love the IP or the genre so much that you might consider it. But that's kind of what a C is. It's just an average, you know, forgettable type of game. So all of that being said, I grade Graveyard Keeper as a b plus i almost said b but i have a soft spot for this game it's not you know a, an enduring classic game it's not flawless in execution it's not a masterpiece or a genre defining but it's really good i had a great time playing this game i have over 132 hours on steam with the game and that's playing through the DLC and playing it again. And by the way, in the description below, I will link my complete playthrough of the game with my Let's Play doing all of the Steam achievements that you can in one playthrough. And then I also have a complete beginner's guide if you're looking to, to learn how to play the game. Maybe you just picked it up or you're thinking about playing it and you want to see gameplay that explains what you're going to be doing. I have that and I'll link that below. And across those plays, I've just come to really have an you know kind of an endearing spot for graveyard keeper so my review is much higher than the metacritic scores and kind of in keeping with the steam review it, i could easily see giving this game a b within that range but i elevate it slightly just because i find it to be a charming game that and i think it's funny and i like kind of funny whimsical types of games so that's where i'm at a b plus now once I give my grade, I like to move into a section of the review where we talk about should you purchase this game? And I evaluate that decision based on a different set of criteria. So first of all, it's kind of a thing where if you like games of this genre, then you would probably like this. If you like Stardew Valley and you want a game that's a little bit like that but has its own thing going and you get to keep a graveyard, yeah, you're going to like this. If you like kind of chill management sim games you will like this i think and you should buy it and play it the difficulty is not high i like to always talk about the game's difficulty because i think it's important for people who are on the fence about buying something maybe they don't want a super hard game or maybe they love hard games this is not a challenging game some things maybe are, are kind of difficult but it's really more of the fact that you have unlimited time to do most things in this game. So take your time and you'll get there and get it done. Even if the combat's hard, you can just make better equipment, get more healing potions, die. You can't die in the game. You come back. So you'll get there. So I don't think it's very hard, which is nice. Value, honestly, I think it's great value for the money. How much content do you get based on how much you're paying? This is a cheap game and it goes on sale and you can get a bundle with the DLCs. And like I said, I had over 130 hours with my playthrough. So I think it's tremendous value considering the length of the game, the price of the game. And, you know, you can buy it on pretty much any system at this point. 
What about replayability? This is an area where the game is not great. They do have a decision that you have to make much later in the game, that if you want to replay it to go si choose a different path and get some of the other achievements, you can do that. But I don't really see a reason to do that. One of the reasons the replayability is hurt is because of the lack of customization you have of your farm and such. You can't really change things up too much, but what you can do is say, well, you know what? I didn't fish last game, so let's try to make my money fishing, or let's try to eat by doing this, or let's not do this, and let's focus on this, or let's try to rush this. And there's challenges you can set for yourself, and there's things you could do, but that's not really, I, I don't think the game is replayable to that degree. It's not great at that. Overall, though, I recommend that people try this if this is a kind of a game that you're interested in. It does it very well. It's funny, and it is just an enjoyable way to spend your time. So I recommend it to not just people who like the genre, but to people who are looking for kind of a fun, chill simulation game that they can sink their teeth into. It is grindy, but I think it's worth it. All right, everybody. So that is my review of Graveyard Keeper. I give the game a B plus, and I recommend it to pretty much everyone to give it a shot because of its extreme value, its ease of difficulty, and it's fun. What do you guys think of this game? Please post your comments and your review in the comments below and tell me what do you think of my review. Do you think it's fair, unfair? What are your experiences with this game and would you recommend it to others? Let me know down below and I'll read your comments. I love to see what you guys have to say about these games. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am linking a Let's Play and a Beginner's Guide below if you're interested. I also have some guides on you know, how to embalm corpses and some other elements of the game that I will put below too. Take care.